Hello and welcome to this, which is a first look at Ubuntu Studio 19.10, codenamed Eon Ermine. Now I do believe that's how it is pronounced. Everyone online seems to think there's a different pronunciation for it, which makes it a little bit confusing. I even saw one video saying that they believe this is the British spelling of the word Eon. As a British person myself, I think I've always seen it be spelt differently, but I'll take his word for it and I'm going to pronounce it Eon. So, Ubuntu Studio, for those of you who don't know, is a Linux distribution based on uh, Ubuntu Linux, which is based on Debian. Uh, and this is a really, really good Linux distribution. It's one I've been using for quite a little while now. Uh, but Ubuntu Studio is a version which takes it and uh, actually configures it right out of the box for all creative purposes. So uh, for both uh, casual and professional use, it is built for um, music and audio production, video production, graphic design and photography, art, and even literature and publishing. Uh, so I use it for music as well as video editing and uh, the graphics. In fact, all of the video editing and graphics done on my very YouTube channel, I do on this system using the software that comes provided in it. It is very, very useful. So actually, what I'm going to do this time is before we look in depth at uh, what's actually in the distribution itself, uh, I'm just going to show a couple of bits of uh, stuff I did during the install because this is actually the second time I've installed this. Uh, so this is just a couple of things to look out for and a couple of features you get in the installation. Now this is actually the second time of me installing this operating system. Whenever you install Ubuntu Studio installations, you would get this nice option here where you can actually have a drop down menu for say, if we look at Ubuntu Studio slash uh, audio, we get a load of audio programs on here. Uh, however, in the last two versions, Ubuntu Studio 19.04 and Ubuntu Studio uh, 18.10, I've had an issue where whenever I untick any of these, uh, after I've done the install, the system fails to boot. So I thought I'd give it another go this time, and uh, just delete programs I don't need. For example, I never use Blender, so I'll have that uninstalled. Uh, but then I had a problem where the system did install correctly. However, waiting in the apt auto remove was uh, a load of programs, including programs I did want to keep, such as KD and Live and OBS, uh, that I didn't seem to be able to get out of the auto remove, and once I actually activated it, it did indeed remove the programs. So, as I was unsure as to what programs did get deleted, uh, I didn't know if there's any core programs that you know don't have a GUI that but's just running like audio in the background, for example. I didn't know if there's any of those that have got deleted. So uh, this is actually my second time installing it. So this time I'm actually going to install and just leave everything ticked, and I'm just have to manually remove things later. Last part of the install here before we actually uh, look at the operating system itself. An interesting part here is this experimental portion here. So this is for actually uh, erasing the current disk and installing the operating system. And here we have the option to actually install using the file format of ZFS. So normally the way the uh, drives in Linux are uh, formatted is they're formatted for, I think it's EXE4. Um, but this is actually giving us the option of ZFS, which is something that I believe started off being used in BSD systems. And uh, I've heard that it's really good for uh, redundancy, so it helps against data loss, and it's meant to be quite quick. Uh, but this time I'm just going to continue using the Linux standard of uh, ext4, but uh, ZFS is definitely a really good option to see in this. Also we have an updated uh, loading screen, although I'm not sure how well this is going to pick up on my camera. So continuing something that came in with uh, Ubuntu Studio 19.04, they've actually completely revamped the uh, Grub menu, the Grub bootloader. So if I just go on to advanced options here, you can see sort of, this is what it would normally look like before. Um, but they updated it, but uh, with this version, with Ubuntu Studio 19.10, uh, they've actually removed the grey from the background here, which uh, originally I wasn't too sold on, but now I'm sort of thinking it looks a bit out of place having this large grey part here with the black around the background. Uh, I think they're probably still experimenting with it right now, but that, that is one new thing we've got. So now we have our system installed, let's have a look at what we get. So first we're actually going to have a look at the article on their website about the release. So uh, this is a part about the beta release, we also have the main release here which we're going to look at. So one of the new things we're going to be getting is uh, over 90 new plugins, which comes from the Linux Studio plugins project, as well as the uh, Distro plugins framework. That is really, really good and fantastic, especially if you're using this for audio work. Um, Ubuntu Studio actually seems to sort of mostly be geared towards audio because of two main features it has. Firstly, it actually uses a low latency version of the Linux kernel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Linux kernel is the thing that, actually, that Linux actually takes its name from. And it's the uh, kernel of the operating system. And basically what that does is it's a piece of software that allows the hardware of your computer, so the actual physical components of the computer, and allows them to speak to the programs on your computer, so the actual software. So this would benefit a lot of audio users in particular. For example, if you're using something like a um, keyboard, and I mean in like a musical keyboard, not a typing keyboard, um, plugging you straight into the computer, uh, it'll go through less latency and should basically your signal, as you press the key, you should hear it almost instantaneously. Uh, latency is where you have 
have a sort of a slight delay in between an actual action requested and what can be heard on the computer itself. So having it low latency will really help with that, especially if you want to keep everything, you know, nice and tightly in, in time without having to do so much quantizing. One of the other things to have a look at, which we will do in a second, is the new control center. But let's go over onto the official release here. So uh, one thing which it's bringing in, which I actually mentioned in my last other two videos looking at Ubuntu Studio 19.04, was actually OBS. And I thought it was a real big shame that OBS actually wasn't featured out of the box. And, you know, even right now, if we look, I'm actually using OBS to record this very video. Uh, but now it is, which uh, according, to, according to Ubuntu Studio, makes Ubuntu Studio the first ever operating system ready for live streaming out of the and video recording out of the box. Double thumbs up for that. It is really, really good. Um, really glad to have it on there. However, if you've noticed, they say that they're going to be including version uh, 23. Uh, unfortunately, though, when I go on this, uh, the version, if you see it up there, is still on 0 0.01, which I believe is the one, yep, 0 0.01, which is the one that, you know, I believe comes into the standard dev packages. So uh, maybe this is more of a plan for the next release, which will be Ubuntu Studio 20.04, but maybe not. Maybe they're going to be sending some updates through now. I've literally installed this. I believe this is the day after it came out. I actually installed it uh, the day it did come out as well, but I've reinstalled it ever uh, since. Uh, but yeah, if you want a newer version, you can always just use the PPA for that. But I'm so, so happy to see them including this out of the box. OBS is a invaluable piece of software. I find it so, so useful. So we go on here. Oh, actually, look at that. In between the beta release and the full release, uh, they've gone up from 90 to 100 audio plugins uh, being added in. This is brilliant. More effects, more plugins, more uh, more software instruments, all this kind of stuff is going to really help with audio work. Fantastic. Uh, we've got the Ray session on here which is for doing uh, laddie session handles. Uh, and that's going to be quite handy for audio. I don't tend to use that very often myself personally. And this is the other main thing. This is one of the main things I was going to I was going to bring up. So if we just look this up quickly, which is uh, Ubuntu Studio Controls. Now, uh, we didn't really get something as intricate as this in previous releases. Uh, and we go on all this over here. Look at all of that. Beautiful. Exactly what we need. Stuff where we can start and stop jack easily without having to have other pieces of software to use it. We can open Pulse Audio Control. We can open Carla. So many things on here. So configurable. So, so, so useful. Um, I still actually, despite doing a lot of my video and graphics editing on uh, Ubuntu and on Linux, I tend to still do a lot of my uh, audio work through Pro Tools and through Sibelius on my copy of Windows 10 Pro. But I've got to tell you, Windows 10's audio is not really that great and uh, Ubuntu has always has never really let me down and having all of this stuff here where I can just easily easily have a look and just change parts it's so configurable fantastic I, I hope that I hope that this is actually packageable for other operating systems because uh, honestly uh, you know I'm not gonna be moving away from Ubuntu Studio anytime soon especially if they could be doing stuff like this but this is the kind of stuff that um, anyone who's interested in doing any kind of audio work on Linux needs to have Brilliant. Thank you so much for adding this in. This is fantastic. And other changes. There's been a couple of things uh, removed here or there and other things added in. Uh, and for the most part, uh, as with most Ubuntu releases, it is going to be mainly the already existing software being updated. But that takes us onto one big piece of software that we've had updated. The actual desktop environment itself. That's right. XFCE, the desktop environment which Ubuntu Studio is based on, is now finally, finally moved up to version 4.14 after being on 4.12 for years and years and years and years and years. And uh, I'm really, really happy actually that um, Ubuntu Studio uses XFC as its desktop environment as it it went it it pushed past no gnome to become my favorite desktop environment it's brilliantly lightweight not that my computer really needs to have that but it's brilliantly lightweight and so it's customizable and one thing that i'm really really glad about with this one apart from you know, the notifications being improved because the packages and the libraries or whatever it may have been is no longer out of date what i can do is if i go onto solid color here i can actually make the panel transparent look at that I've been wanting to have, um, I've been wanting to uh, have a transparent panel. I'm actually going to have a transparent panel at the sides, my plan, for quite a few uh, releases now. I used to have it before, but then since they made it where everything had to be opaque, uh, this is not really a problem on Ubuntu Studio, by the way. Uh, Zubuntu, the uh, just base version of Ubuntu that uses XFC, has also been experiencing this. Um, they've had it as well. I'm very, very glad to see this coming, uh, this uh, being added in. And uh, one thing I was concerned about is I was worried that uh, being a production and creativity based, basically a workstation based operating system, I was worried that Ubuntu Studio weren't going to upgrade to 14.14. So glad to see that they have. Good job. So with that all out of the way, and of course not forgetting the new um, desktop background here, let's have a look at what we get installed out of the box. So I'm just going to open up the whisker menu here and I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger, 
bit easier to see. Right, so let's go through it category at a time. So starting on the big one, audio production. Doesn't seem like there's a huge amount there until we go opening up all these utilities and effects and instruments. Oh lord, and midi utilities and it's just stuff here for days. And the brilliant thing is that um, Ubuntu Studio comes pre-configured with Jack, which is a form of uh, audio control and it's like an audio driver used within Linux systems. And the brilliant thing about Jack, if you haven't used it too much, I haven't used it a whole lot, but I'm, I'm working on it more, uh, is that you can treat it very, very much like a patch bay. So if you've ever worked with a studio where it has, you know, an actual physical patch bay where you'd run patch cables from linking, say, a, uh, a rack unit into the actual uh, mixing desk itself, you can treat it very much the same way. Uh, apart from, instead of being physical piece of hardware, it's software you'd be doing it from. So I could open up any of these and have them feeding into, say for example, our door as my digital audio workstation or even LMMS, for example, uh, making pretty much anything, even if it's not built to be necessarily, you know, an audio plugin on its own, you can actually force it into being one. Super, super useful stuff here. Uh, of course, we have the Ubuntu Studio Controls, new thing up there front and center and then like i said we've got a couple of daws digital audio workstations here being ardor uh, which is a sort of main one it's it's kind of like uh, i don't think of it as an open source equivalent to pro tools i really like the look of it myself uh, audacity which isn't really a proper daw uh, this is quite good for simple quick uh, audio recording audio editing here or there burning software we've got some more sequences drum editors stuff like that the instead dj console useful if you want to do a podcast we of course then have lms another uh daw although i don't know if it works with pure audio it's a bit more for sequencing a bit more for electronic music uh, i'm going to skip over this for a second uh because we've got a little bit of other parts here and uh, i'm pretty sure this wasn't in the last release so it's nice to see that added in nice to see some new parts added in but uh, this is a big bit for me is MuseScore version 3 so MuseScore is an actual notation editor and I'm so, so glad it's moved up to version three. Uh, you can see my previous video right here. I actually had it where, um, because of the Ubuntu or the Debian packages, uh, if you were using Ubuntu Studio 19.04, even though MuseScore 3 was the latest version, you could only use MuseScore 2 unless you use the Snap packages. But as you see, right out of the box, we're getting MuseScore 3, fantastic. Let's move on to graphic design. So at this point, I'll admit that I'm gonna start not knowing things so well. Um, in fact, I'm going to be un uninstalling a good chunk of this, so uh, have a look in here. If these are useful to you, then fantastic. Uh, not so useful to me. I'm not really a photographer, much of a graphic designer, so for example, a rapid photo downloader wouldn't do too well for me. I only take a couple of photos whenever I do, but if you are a photographer snapping loads and loads and loads of shots, this is going to be super, super useful. Of course, we have a Blender, which not only is a 3D model, but also is an actual video editor. So one of, I think, about three or four we have here. Um, standard stuff like document viewers, ebook viewers. We have a GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is a alternative to Photoshop. And personally, I have never found the urge to want to go and bother to use Photoshop when GIMP does everything I need. Uh, all my thumbnails that you ever see on my channel and the graphics I use are made using this. That and GPIC, which is just a really, really useful little piece of software. Actually, I'm going to click on it for you. Wherever your cursor points, it will show you the color. And if you see just there, it'll show you the color code of what you're looking at. I don't know why that turns orange when you look at that, but hey, it does. Super, super useful. Really nice piece of software. Of course, we have Inkscape for working on vector graphics. I use that a fair bit. Uh, Critter, which I think is sort of like a paint program, although I have seen some people say uh, they prefer using it to GIMP, for example. We've got other pixel and other editors are down here very very useful stuff if you tend to use it but then talking about video production if you notice that blender's here if we also go into video he's there as well because of course it can be used as a uh, actual video editor itself uh, we've got a uh, dvd this is personally i like uh, if you notice how it's spelled dvd it's firstly one of my favorite programs for actually uh, burning dvds and cds uh Kenyan live my personal favorite uh video editor and it's uh you know if it is the cute version, your uh, for GTK, this is meant to be the equivalent, open shot. Although personally, not really my cup of tea. I tend to stick to KED and Live, even though for the most part, I tend to use GTK-based programs. Uh, OBS, making its uh, debut in Ubuntu Studio again. I'm going to keep singing its praises. Love it. Uh, we've got a couple more, uh, so I think, simpler video editors maybe here. We've got some screencasts, other things. XF Burn, another piece of, uh, that's a piece of, uh, I think, built-in XFCE software. A couple more um, video editors down here. And then most of the rest is standard stuff you'd get in a normal install of, of Ubuntu. We'll have a look anyway. So if you've got accessories, accessories, we've got you know archive manager, application finder, stuff like this. Um, you know, the display manager, a text editor, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, education, we've got uh, part of the LibreOffice suite, LibreOffice and Math. Uh, games, just a couple of standard games. Minesweeper, or Mines rather, Sudoku. Uh, I'll be filling this, I'll probably be deleting those and filling them up with games I actually probably want to play more. 
uh, internet. Uh, the standard internet browser you get is Firefox, uh, my personal favorite browser. We also get the KG Connect part here, which uh, I didn't actually realize would work with uh, other desktop environments. I thought it was only KDE, but um, I haven't actually tried that on my phone yet, so I'm gonna have to give that a go. The Pigeon Internet Messenger. If I did more uh, actual internet messaging, I might use this more, but it's a really useful feature to have out of the box. Uh, my favorite email client, Thunderbird here, and Transmission, which is for Torrents. Under Media Playback, we get both the uh, Parole, which is a, I believe, a standard XFCE-based video viewer, as well as VLC, the Juggernaut. It will, if it doesn't run on VLC, where will it run? And we also got a Jack Mixer here, very, very useful, especially when you're moving around audio and other things, uh, because remember, the Jack Mixer doesn't necessarily have to be used for actually creating audio. Uh, if you wanted to use this as some sort of like theatre setup, it'd make that quite useful as well. In Office, we get uh, the rest of the LibreOffice suite we're shown, although I find it interesting that it's not the full uh, Office suite. I find it interesting that they've missed the uh, presentation part of it, as I do find a presentation piece of software, I, I would see that personally as a more standard than a mathematics-based uh, piece of software, for example, but hey, I'll just install that later. Uh, PDF Ranger, very, very useful, like I said. Uh, one of the bits on this that actually doesn't get its category of its own, but is sort of taken into consideration, is publishers and authors. If you cast your mind back to looking at the bit where I was showing the different categories you could choose to install or not install, uh, fonts was on there. Ubuntu Studio comes with a hell of a lot of fonts out of the box and it is absolutely brilliant for if you were to do writing and publishing and so this you've got a pdf arranger there so if you've actually you know exported certain parts of the book but say say you've done a cover in gimp for example we've written the rest in libreoffice you can then use this to actually put it all into one big uh, pdf document once you go into here we have you know settings manager standard setting stuff although something i was quite glad to see two things uh, this is a ubuntu wide thing is having the nvidia settings uh, out of the box uh, I personally currently am running a uh, NVIDIA GTX 970 and on certain versions of Ubuntu prior to this I've had it before I've had to swap out cards just to install it and it's been a pain in the butt. Uh, with this everything's running nice and smoothly out of the box. And the other thing I'm going to talk about on here other than you know the Ubuntu Studio controls coming up again brilliant glad to see that there again is going to actually be the uh, Qt5 settings. Uh, now, if you see my video here of actually getting the music player Clementine to work and actually to follow your GTK theme, despite it being a Qt based program or a Qt based program, um, I actually had to install the Qt5 settings. So actually having it out of the box is going to be very, very useful, especially if I do need to go do any configuring. We have, uh, you know, just a couple of more other bits that we've already on there. So this is an interesting part for actually adding uh, Ubuntu Studio to Ubuntu flavors. Uh, this is something that some people have been trying, have been asking for for ages, and Ubuntu Studio team are trying to implement it right now, where you can actually install Ubuntu Studio as sort of like a meta package into other systems. So, say for argument's sake, you really like GNOME. In fact, I did this uh, when I installed Ubuntu Studio, I believe it was 18.10. I wanted to use it with GNOME, so I installed the standard Ubuntu Studio distribution, which comes as standard with XFCE, and then I installed GNOME and just switched across using that. With this, if you, if I wanted to now use stuff like the um, Ubuntu Studio Control Manager and having that load ATC Linux kernel and having all the jack configuration out of the box, everything like, you know, set up ready to go like Ubuntu Studio is, but I wanted to use GNOME, for example, I could install a standard version of Ubuntu that comes with GNOME as standard and then use this or uh, some other form of meta package to actually Ubuntu studio fired and make it a Ubuntu Studio just with that environment. So obviously you could do this as well with something like KDE, for example, if you'd rather use the Plasma desktop. Super, super, super useful. It means that, you know, Ubuntu Studio doesn't have to just be an XFCE-based distribution, but can actually work for loads of others. And that brings me on to another point about Ubuntu Studio. It isn't simply a distribution that is just Ubuntu with, you know, a couple of programs installed. It's the kernel, it's the Ubuntu Studio controls like this, it's all the jack things being set about the box, everything like this, it is It is already sort of configured and pre-wired and ready to go. It isn't just, you know, our Ubuntu with KD and Live and our door already installed. This stuff is ready to go. And that's what's so brilliant and that's what's so just great about this distribution, is that if you're someone like me, for example, who likes to use their computer to actually make things and to be creative and to do other things like that on it, this is the kind of system you want, an operating system that has come out of the box straight for that. And it works just brilliantly as a standard uh, operating system to use as well. You know, I'll, I'll be installing games on this, which has nothing to do with any of this stuff later and playing those, but 
I, I have all of this just set up and pre-configured out of the box. And the audio is rock solid. Everything is just ready to go. And last but not least, we have the Windows Student information bit here. So this is mostly the same, you know, with information and links to IRC chats and mailing things. But then we have an interesting link to uh, Ask Ubuntu, which is uh, something new. I'm not sure if this is across all versions of Ubuntu 19.10 or just Ubuntu Studio. But um, I have gone on this website so many times to actually find solutions to problems, uh, be it by looking up other people's uh, issues or actually by posting them myself. And uh, the people on Ask Ubuntu are always super, super friendly and super useful when they can be. It's really, really nice. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to get this all nice and configured now to be exactly how I like it. Uh, would I recommend uh, downloading and installing Ubuntu Studio? Absolutely. Maybe, you know, like I said, this is only the second day of it being out. I would probably wait about five or six days, maybe a week, and then install it just so any sort of slight bugs can be ironed out of this latest version. Brilliant piece of software. I'm going to continue using it. And yeah, uh, in between the time between this release being 1910 and the next release being 20.04, I'm actually going to do another video where it's sort of a halfway point review where I'm actually going to look at what I've done to it, how I've used it, and then really that'll be a proper review because we'll be looking at, you know, things that have gone right, things that have gone wrong, rather than just, you know, a first look like this has been. But uh, I hope you found this useful, and if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.